Hi, and welcome to the ESPC Property Show. It's Paul and it's... Megan. So it is. So this episode, um, we were thinking about a catchy title and the only way I could describe this is this is the episode that your future self would thank you for watching, we think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's We basically cover everything about getting your finances in order, yeah. really, from things like saving, how to get the most out of ISAs. Um, How to have a pension. Yeah, from, like, from, yeah. From, from, from as, a, as a baby. Yeah, uh, yeah, pension, <laughs> a, a baby pension. Yeah. <laughs> a baby pension, yeah. <laughs> and a lighter. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So yeah, we kind of cover everything that you can get out of the financial Making industry. the most of, yeah, of um, your tax um, benefits and your allowances every year. And then we talk about also protection, life insurance, etc. It's more exciting than it sounds in parts, but it's really good. <laughs> it's really good and it's really interesting and hopefully you'll be able to take away a few nuggets for your Do you own know life. as well? Andy kept things really simple. There was no jargon. Yeah, absolutely no jargon. And Andy wanted us to say up front that obviously these are just quite generic pieces of guidance that he's giving. It's not per, it's not financial advice. If you want financial advice, go to and speak to a financial advisor Indeed. about that. Right, without further ado, here's the show. Hello, uh, welcome. It's Paul and it's... Megan. And here we are with our guest, Andy. We're not asking you to say your name in a high-pitched voice like we've just done, Andy. You can, it's probably best you introduce yourself because yeah. it's, yeah, you do that. No problem. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for having me on, uh, guys. Really, really good to be here. Uh, my name's Andy Lewis. Uh, I work for a company called John Scott Davidson uh, uh, Limited as a financial advisor. Um, we are what's called um, a partner practice within a bigger business called St. James's Place. Uh, so we are a, an authorised representative of St James's Place, which essentially means that, that we work in conjunction with St James's Place in how we offer advice to, to clients. Um, and for those of the, 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 the listeners that don't know St James's Place, they are probably the UK's, one of the UK's biggest wealth management uh, companies in the, in the UK. Um, and they offer advice across the usual things that you'd expect from a financial advisor, like pensions, savings, protection, etc. Yeah. And we're going to touch on some of those things Definitely. tonight. In fact, shall we just get started? Um, so um, we were just chatting there. We're nearly at the end of February now, and the end of the tax year is looming large. Um, I guess we should start by asking them, what are the top things we should be thinking about now as we move towards the end of the tax year, what should we be doing yeah. that we maybe we aren't doing? As you say, Paul, we're, we're nearly at the end of February already. The sun is shining the in Edinburgh, shining. which is, yeah, which is yeah, massively uh, unusual. The, the tax year ends um, at 5th of April, uh, which is, I think, about five, six weeks away. Yeah. So not a huge amount of time. Um, and, and I guess what I would say at this time of year, it's a really good opportunity to do a bit of a spring clean um, on your personal financial circumstances. And everybody is different and everybody's circumstances are different. So I would always say seek advice um, if there are areas that, that you really want to explore. But there are some themes that we all should be, be cognizant of. Um, and I would say the first one is probably your savings and investments. There's quite a lot of um, reliefs out there that, that you can take advantages or allowances that you can take advantage of just to, to make sure that you're using them all before the end of the tax year. So as an example, an ISA, um, which is a, an individual savings account, which no doubt we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more yep. detail later. Um, everybody has £20,000 of an allowance that they can put into an ISA each tax year. However, if they don't use that full 20000 allowance, they can't roll it into the next year. Yeah, So it's a, a use it or lose it type allowance. Um, and there's, there's other things um, in addition to that, so capital gains tax allowances, IHT allowances, um, <clears throat> some of which you can roll, some of which you can't roll. So it's just a really good time to put the foot in the ball and just make sure that you're mm -hmm. taking advantage of all those allowances that are available to you all. Um, if you're a business owner as well, there's some other things that you, you might want to be cognizant of as well, and that could come down to the amount of corporation tax that potentially you pay any tax year, depending on how mm -hmm. you manage your book so really important from that point of view and also if you are um, a business owner the amount of dividends that, that you take out um, each year as well that's just also important to bear in mind pensions are another area that that, that are really important to, to consider at the end of each tax year again similar to ISAs everybody gets an allowance and um, that they can contribute to a pension each year slight difference with pensions is you can go back a few years and um, if you didn't use your full allowance in previous years but everybody has sixty thousand pounds of an allowance or a hundred percent of their income that, that can go into a pension each year so again at this time of year you may be thinking oh i've, I've only paid forty thousand mm -hmm. then if you're lucky enough to earn <laughs> a big salary and um, so make sure that you take yeah. advantage of that and get that 
get that into How would you know how much you've paid in? Was that a silly question? How much you know you've paid into yeah. a pension? Um, it really depends. So you could have more than one pension, but yeah. if you've got a, a private personal pension in place, you should be able to speak to your uh, provider of that pension and, and they'll something. let you know how much you've, you've used or how much you've not right. used. And actually, from an ISA point of view, your, your ISA provider should be able to tell you how much on allowance you've, you've still got to use up sure. in the year. Um, so, so pensions are, are, a, are a great thing. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that mm. a bit later on. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're a, really good, um, a really good thing to have in mind. Make sure you're using the, the, the allowances and, and all the rest of it before you're going in. It's also important if you think about someone who's drawing the pension as well. Um, it, it's quite important to efficiently access your pension. Um, and that's something else that you might want to be cognizant of going to the end of the tax year. If you take too much out of your pension, then you might pay too much tax. Um, okay. Whereas if, if you can let it stay in your pension pot and access it as and when you need it, it can, it can reduce your, your tax exposure as well. I think the last sort of area, so I've talked about three areas there, the last sort of area for me is something that you should do regularly anyway, um, but uh, as I said, the spring clean opportunity that, <laughs> that tax year gives you is just making sure you've got the right levels of personal protection in place um, so that you know if the worst should happen to you, your family is, is protected. Um, so I would say that they're sort of the key areas to, to think about. It's a great time to, to yeah, just put foot in the ball, really. Yeah, we've got you in the right time, you think? <laughs> yeah, I think the, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, we are towards the end of February is don't leave these sort of things to the last minute. I bet you um, love that, don't you? <laughs> exactly. 28th of March. <laughs> well, exactly. So so I think what, what you run the risk of, of mm -hmm. doing is leaving it too late and missing mm -hmm. out on some of those things. Yeah. Um, so definitely... If, uh, if you can, Go get, into it, get into it early. And as I said at the outset, seek mm -hmm. advice um, from, from an advisor, a financial advisor, if there's areas that you, you want to know more about and, and explore. Um, but yeah, don't leave it to the last minute. Because <laughs> you. you might miss out <laughs> on the opportunities. Happy. Yeah, absolutely. So Andy, um, we obviously deal in the business of property. Mm -hmm. uh, purchasing a property does require quite a lot of savings. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering if uh, you could chat us through how our listeners can make the most of their savings, a bit more about maybe what ISAs are and, sure. and how they, we can make the most of them. Yeah, definitely. So I always like to start um, with people looking at their income and expenditures, right? Do a budget. <laughs> it's really important and, and not everybody does it, but it is really important because what that will allow you to do is track your spending, um, being cognizant of what's coming into the household, track your spending in terms of what's going out at the household. Now, in an ideal world, you have a surplus, um, and and if you have a surplus, bro surplus, brilliant. But I know it's difficult at the moment. Yeah. There's you know there's a um, cost of living crisis. Things are expensive, so I appreciate it is a difficult thing to do. But the start point for me, from a savings perspective, is always make sure that you have a rainy day fund or an emergency um, fund that you can access should the boiler go in the mm -hmm. brink or mm -hmm. you need a repair done yeah. to the car. Cash that's easily accessible that you can get your hands on. Now, typically, you would say that's three to six months worth of, of essential expenditure that you just have ready to go. What the guidance I would give to people is just make sure that that's in the best interest-bearing bank account that you can mm. you can you can get your hands on, um, so that it's at least doing something in the background. Yeah, I'm fairly liquid, so you can access it quickly. It's so. all about the liquidity, yeah. Paul, yeah. so that it is easy to access. It's mm. not stuck in property. It's not stuck in the stock market. Yeah. Um, once you've done that, I think that gives you a really good, solid base and foundation to, to then work from. Um, ISAs would then be my next port of call. Um, and actually, ISAs are brilliant. Um, they're, they're effectively a wrapper. So anything that you put into that is is protected from, the growth is protected from tax. So there's no tax whilst it's in that, that wrapper. As I said earlier, everybody has £20,000 that they can contribute to, to an ISA. Um, that's their annual allowance. And you, there's a number of different types, from the most basic cash ISA to a stocks and shares ISA to a lifetime ISA, which we will definitely yeah, no yeah. Doubt talk about, <laughs> about later on. Um, but you can have a combination of a few different things and, and put the money into them. I would Once you've got your emergency cash in place um, and you've got a good foundation and you're open to taking a little bit of risk by investing it in, in the stock market, the stocks and shares ISA might be a good option for you to, to explore. Um, and that, again, just allows you to put money into this tax-efficient wrapper 
And then whilst it's in that wrapper, you can make selections on how that's invested. And that could be in you know, stocks and shares, individual stocks and shares out there, or in funds that... Mm-hmm. that, that Which can go up or down, but the reality is if you invested, I don't know, in Tesla a few years ago, inside an ISO and you doubled or tripled your money, and then you sell all your shares, yeah. you're not paying tax on that. Correct. That's there's, all yours, isn't correct. it? There's no capital gains yeah. tax on that. And and so what, what I what I really like about, about ISO is, is that... that feature of them mm-hmm. um, everything that's going in is has got this wrapper around it um, what I would say is try and have a long medium to long term outlook on, on a stocks and shares either because we've seen it in the last few years it, the world is very volatile yeah. um, and <clears throat> uh, and you know things can go up and go down as, mm-hmm. as you mentioned and, and there's a phrase that, that I keep hearing about trying to time the market. Time think, in the market. I think it? that's impossible. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. time in the market. 100% mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um, and, you know, there's some statistics been, been looked at previously where, you know, if you leave the money in for, for 20 years, the, the growth of, of stocks mm-hmm. and shares versus cash, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's a massive difference there. Um, but it's really about that time in the market rather than, than mm-hmm. time out. Even if you were to keep it in for 20 years but miss the 10 best days for whatever <laughs> reason within that, the amount of, of uh, return that you would get would be dramatically lower. Um, so it really is about that. Once you've once you've exhausted your, your eyes allowance each year, then other things to think about are have I used my pension allowance fully because as previously mentioned, pensions are a great place to, to put your money. However, obviously you've got to bear in mind that you, you might not be able to access that for a few years. <clears> so at this point in time, you can't, access your pension until you're 55 mm-hmm. if, if you've set it up as a, as a personal pension. If you need the money sooner, then maybe that isn't the route to go down. Um, if you're lucky enough to have you know, cash reserves and money to, to invest, the, the next sort of things that you could look at would be you know, investment bonds or, or unit trust type products. There's other vehicles and solutions depending on what your individual circumstances mm-hmm. are. And your attitude to risk, I guess, as well. Absolutely. Attitude to risk is, is I guess, the foundation for where you, you put your exposure of, of, of money. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you are, if you're a, a risk-averse person, maybe the stock market isn't for you. <laughs> um, but if you are willing to accept some risk, then, yeah. then perhaps that is the place to go. Okay. All right. Uh, only other thing I would say beyond that, um, from a savings point of view, so beyond ISAs, again, if you are lucky enough to have swells of, of reserves, then... Um, there are things called VCTs and, and enterprise investment schemes, which definitely require uh, experience in investing and are only for those that, that know what they're doing, but they can represent some really good tax reliefs and, and give you tax incentives to, to be part of. So that could be another further mm-hmm. vehicle for your for your, your savings and, and trying to make the most of them. Sure. Well, let's go back to something you, you touched on earlier in, in, in that answer there was a lifetime ISA. Mm. How can that benefit first time buyers and I think the government may have some schemes around this talk, yeah. to, talk to us about that maybe. yeah so so lifetime ISAs or, or LISAs I like that so they were they were brought in by the government back in 2017 I think and, and the idea behind them was trying to help people to buy their, their first homes we all, we all know how difficult mm-hmm. and, and how much money you need to save for a deposit yeah. to, to be able to do that um, so that was something the government brought in to, to try and help with that process. And in simple terms, you can open it from age 18 um, uh, to the age of 39, so before your 40th birthday. Um, and you can pay into that until age 50. Um, and uh, if you haven't used it to buy your, your first um, house purchase before then, um, you can access it at age 60. And you can save £4,000 into that each year. So that would use £4,000 of your £20,000 ISA allowance. Okay, So you would still have the ability to use mm-hmm. £6,000 if you, if you else, were able yeah. to. But the best bit about it is um, the government will give you a 25% bonus on, on what you put into Say that again. a lifetime ISA. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. It's not so that's often. £1,000 for the £4,000. Correct. It? Yeah. Well, so, so you can effectively put £4,000 in. The government will top that up with £1,000 and you've got £5,000. Right, brilliant. So even if in that ISA it doesn't get any growth mm-hmm. from from whether you put it into a cash ISA or a stocks and shares one, and I'll come back to the stocks and shares part yep. with that with Eliza. Even if you don't get any growth on that ISA, the government's giving you twenty five percent. Kind of free money, isn't it? Is the, is the uh, strings attached to that? Yeah. So so yeah. Always read the small print. I yeah. think <laughs> <laughs> um, is is definitely the guidance there. There are some rules around around you know how you get that twenty five percent. So so you can't just open one up. 
get the 25% and then buy a house immediately. You, mm -hmm. you have to wait 12 months before okay. you can do that. And it has to be for a house purchase? First house purchase, right? Uh -huh. However, if you don't use it for a first house purchase, you can access it at 60 in current oh, rates. So okay. it actually can be quite a useful thing to have if you've yeah. already bought a house and you're in that age bracket, unfortunately I no longer am, <laughs> then it may be something just to have as well yeah, towards your retirement planning. Mm. Um, so, so it does have that sort of added benefit, but the reason why I like it is if you're in a if you're a couple, um, you can do it times two. So I could I could have one and my partner could have one, um, and that would effectively, if we could afford to do it, save eight thousand pounds and then get two thousand. So is it four thousand pounds per annum, or is that the total cap yeah, per, per annum? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and each year the government puts it. Thousand in if you're so, putting four in. So you get your twenty five percent bonus on, on what you save into basically, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. But <laughs> what 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 you need to what you also need to be, I guess, cognizant of is when you're buying a, your first home is I suppose taking a few steps back yeah. and planning out, well, okay, how much money have we got just now? How realistic or how soon can we make that house purchase? <coughs> mm -hmm. Um and if it is, you know, twelve, eighteen months down the lane, that's good planning actually yeah. on, on your part. Yeah. Um, but you do need that 12 month period to be able to, to see yeah. the benefit of Eliza if you're buying it for, for that yeah. first property. One thing to, to bear in mind with Eliza as well is if you um, access it to get your funds and it's either not because you're buying your first property or at age 60 or if you've been diagnosed with that with a terminal illness and, and have 12 months left to live, you will um, pay a 25% um, withdrawal penalty. For, for taking those funds out. So that's also really important to bear in mind just to make sure that, that you are uh, you know aware of that before you, you open it up on and indeed when you come to, to withdraw funds. And in terms of uh, Eliza, so they, they used to be the help to buy ISAs, but they, they don't have, they're not in circulation anymore, I don't know what. This uh, effectively has replaced them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is there a cap on property price? Because I know for the old help to buy, you yeah. couldn't um, purchase anything. Well, you wouldn't get the bonus over well, 250. So that, that's the importance of reading the, the small print, Megan. So 450,000 pounds or less okay. is, is, is what you could cover most first-hand buying yeah. purchases, <laughs> I would imagine. One would have thought, <laughs> even in Edinburgh and <laughs> yeah. in, in, the, in, in the surrounding area, I would yeah. have thought, um, and, and yeah, there's other things in there. You must use a conveyancer sure. to, to be able to access it um, yeah. when you're making that house Because they signed a declaration earlier. Thing. But fair play to the government, that, you know, I'm not sure everybody is aware of that. You know, it's that's a cracking mm -hmm. little scheme, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's good, it's yeah. good. And yeah. also the other caveat is that you have to have a mortgage alongside it, but, you know. Of course, yeah. Yeah, that, that goes with it. But yeah, I think, I think they're great. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said about the, the bit, earlier you know everybody's circumstances are different so you know mm -hmm. you want to look into it and make sure it's right for your circumstances yeah. but even if you're in that that age bracket and you've already bought your first property it may be quite a nice thing just to contribute to mm. um, as part of your retirement plan yeah. absolutely Good if stuff. you're happy to wait that long time yeah. to get access well, to it I just say time in the market yeah. indeed the only downside i suppose if you were to put it in that way and, and you'd already made your first purchase and you took the money out before you were 60 because you needed your hands mm -hmm. on it, then you lose that 25% ah, okay. bonus. Right. Okay. Got you. So um, there might be some parents listening, Andy. Um, okay. And we were wondering, um, they might be thinking uh, if they'd like to support their, their kids in the purchase of, the, of their, their kids' first home. Yeah. Um, what are the best ways that they can do that? Bank of mum and daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a busy bank. Uh, yeah. Indeed it is, indeed yeah. it is. I mean, look, the, there's there's loads of ways that, that parents can, can help their, their children in terms of that, um, you know, from, from just a, a cash gift, I suppose, to, to towards uh, the help of a, a deposit. Um, one of the things that I really like is, again, it's it's ISA related, so um, a savings account, an individual savings account related, is something called a junior ISA. Okay. Um, and again, everybody's circumstances are different, so... You know what 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 I'm about to say is just as an example, mm -hmm. um, but on on the birth of your child, you could open up a juniorizer, um, you can contribute nine thousand pounds into that annually, so that's the allowance that can go into a juniorizer, um, so you can make a monthly regular contribution to that. When they get to sixteen, they get a bit of control, right? They can't they can't <laughs> withdraw it all, mm. but they can sort of have some influence over how it's invested or where it where it is, and then at eighteen they get control of the, yeah. of the junior ISA. So I think that that's obviously quite a longer term play, a longer term plan that, that the parents are having to think about there. 
Um, personally, I've got two two daughters at, at six and eight. They've got junior eyes. They had them in place from from birth. Um, what was important to me with that is they were my eldest was born a little bit after the the child trust funds. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Remember, I think it was the Labour government mm-hmm. that, that had them. So I thought well, that's a bit unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so if I uh, if I can afford to put something away each month and it doesn't need to be a huge amount, then that will hopefully help when they get to eighteen and you know rough calculations and based on some assumed growth, the amount of, of money that, that I'm, uh, I'm putting in each month for both of them will hopefully mean at 18, they've got a pot of you know 15 to 20,000 pounds yeah. that, that they can either use for a house deposit. Or go to YBTA. <laughs> well, this is the importance, Paul. This is the importance. I know where I do. The exact, <laughs> when I was 18. The, the, this is the importance of, of um, maybe just helping yeah. to educate your, your children yeah. about money uh, as, as you're going along I that, think we should be doing journey. that more in schools. I mean, I know it's a hobby horse of mine that, you yeah. know, that understands Understanding the, the imperative of saving and, and pensions yeah. and stuff early on in your life, you know, mm-hmm. it, I think if you get an idea of money and, and what it actually means, I think it makes such a difference, doesn't it? Really? I, I mean, I wholeheartedly agree with that, um, and, and in the absence of that, I'm going to try and do it myself yeah. <laughs> with, yeah, yeah, with yeah, my yeah. children. Good but you. yeah, hopefully they'll see the value of money and they'll get to eighteen and realise actually I've got some responsibility mm-hmm. here over quite a lot of money, mm-hmm. so I'm not going to do something. Mm-hmm too silly with it yeah. and yeah. you know I'm, I'm quite comfortable if, if they wanted to use that for higher education yeah. or you know help, help to pay towards university or something yeah. like that but ultimately what it does give them is a, a, a lump sum of money at the end of that and uh, at 18 that they can access if they wanted to buy a property yeah. they could also just leave it there yeah. and not access it and let it let it grow mm-hmm. and ultimately the, the biggest um, the biggest friend in all of this is compound growth and mm-hmm. The reason why putting a small amount away at, at one, two, three, four, five, six years old is that it's got time in the market. <laughs> so it's interest on on the it's growth, interest on growth. And it just keeps on growing. It's growth yeah. on growth, and because because in this particular case with the junior ISA, you are looking at a medium to longer term um, period of time. You can actually afford to take a little bit more risk, or certainly in my my opinion and my own personal circumstances because you can ride out some of that volatility and some of those downturns mm-hmm. in the market um, over that period. Because you're looking at a longer 18 yeah. year, 20 we don't, year we don't time need, rising. We don't need access to yeah. the money, we don't need it now, it's in there for them to when they get to 18. Yeah. The, way, the way I look at it is that, that their future self will, uh, yeah. you know, if it means Thank a few for less sweets in, yeah. in, in a week that's for it. them, that's all it is. Uh, yeah. their future self will, will sign them for that. Yeah. And then at 18, they've got the responsibility over it and, you know, yeah. they're an adult and then they can decide what to do with it. Yeah. I think that's a great way of, mm-hmm. of helping your kids to, to save for their, their first house or, or a yeah. property. But it's quite a long term yeah. play that you have to yeah. that you have to go for there. Um, but a lot of this stuff that we're talking about today is, isn't it, Andy? This is all doing the right thing very early and reaping the benefits in 10, 20, 30 years, really. Yeah. Uh, or even longer, generations. Um, yeah. Let's end on a high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say that and then talk about pensions. But, but let's, let's talk about pensions because I, I think the common theme here, Andy, is very much around if you can, and we recognise that not everyone's going to have the surplus to do any of these things, but if you can, and certainly I think pensions is such a critical one, isn't it? I don't think... Any of us can rely on the government to look after us in later life. It's safe to say, isn't it? The, the pension age getting pushed out and pushed out, and the amount you're getting is going to dwindle when you look at what inflation's doing. But yeah, how would you see this, and, and when should people start a pension? And now, obviously, employees chip in towards your pension in most cases. And yeah, so, how's it work? So, look, as a financial advisor, this sounds really cheesy and corny, but I love <laughs> pensions. I, yeah. think I think they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. So, um, the government want you to 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 save for your retirement. Um, you know, we are quite lucky in the UK still in that, that we have a state pension um, and, you know, albeit it's getting pushed mm-hmm. further and further mm-hmm. out that you're able to access it. It is something to consider within your retirement planning that you will have, have state pension in there. People can, can go onto the government website as well and get a forecast of what their state pension will look like in retirement. I think that's really important yeah. to bear in mind and, you know, based on national insurance contributions and all the rest of it. But you can go on to the the HMRC government website, put in your details and it'll tell you how much your state pension forecast will look like. So that's good and, and have that in mind. However, <laughs> as we've kind of touched on, having a personal pension provision um, is really important as well. Um, and as I said, the, one of the main things that I like about it is the tax relief that you get 
um, for, for paying into a pension. And, you know, truly, if you're a, a basic rate taxpayer, if you put in £80 into a pension, the government will put £20 in, so effectively £100 goes into that pension. And the higher up the, the sort of tax echelons that you move, the more tax relief that you, you get. Um, so if you're, a, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, um, then you get even more than, than the, 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 the £20 that I've just mentioned there, or 20% tax relief that I've just mentioned there. It could be as high as 45% uh, tax relief, you know. So if you're a, if in that bracket and you're fortunate enough to be in that bracket, it's it's a no-brainer, I think, to, to mm. max out as much as you can. Um, once you start getting into the earnings of £100,000 mm. plus, actually a pension can be a really good thing to do to reduce your tax liability as well as saving for your, for your future as well. So really, really good things. What, what I like about them is you can start them the day that you're born. So you've got to be, you know, right. yeah, well, so right. grand, gra one of the things that, that grandparents get quite in, excited about and interested about is because they're at that stage in life is, oh, so I, I, I can put money into a pension for wow. my grandson. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so the maximum that you could put in at this point in time would be 2,800, but the government would give you that 20%. So it would be 3,600 going into that pension for your one-year-old grandchild, wow. right? It's a young-looking pensioner. It is, right? <laughs> but think about what we talked about earlier yeah, on, the length yeah. of time that that would be in the market Absolutely. and the compound growth yeah. that you would get over that, um, yeah. you know, at, wow. at the time that you come to, to actually access it. Yeah. I mean, goodness knows what age that would be, yeah. given changes that might come down the line, but you've got a, a potentially a nice big pension pot there that, that you've got. And whilst the grandparent might not see the benefit of that, <laughs> or be around to see the benefit of that, at least they know that they've they've done that. So you can start them really, really early. Yeah. Um, but it's the, it's the tax relief on the way in that, that I think is the, the most uh, exciting piece around around a, a personal yeah. pension. That you and can if you're going for a job, it is one of the questions you should be asking, isn't it? I think, I remember I, I went to work for Legal in General and they said, well, the pay ain't great, but you got a good pension. I'm thinking, really bothered about that I'm 22 why would I yeah. care but you know now I look at it and think actually do you know what that served me quite well that little period of my life when I was there you know yeah comparatively what I got out of that. it is good to ask what is the you know what is the contribution you, the, the, the employees make into your pension 100% because so they have to contribute something so they? they do now by law yeah, yeah but excuse me what we tend to see now is something called a defined contribution yeah. um, pension scheme where you know what you're paying in how it performs in the market or where you invest it ultimately dictates how much you get out of the mm. other end. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely an important part of if you're working for, for a company, what, what contributions will they make to that, yeah. that pension for you? And some some pension schemes from employers are fantastic. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll match or, or even double your contributions if you're willing to mm. put, put a good amount in. So I would definitely have that as a question yeah. if you're going to work somewhere yeah. new or indeed yeah. even if you work somewhere. Because yeah. I speak to loads of people and you ask them, know. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how much I put into my pension. Mm -hmm. It just comes off my, my wages. Mm -hmm. Find out about stuff like yeah, that because it's an important more. part of what your retirement looks like. And I know at 21, <coughs> 22, 23, <laughs> in, in your younger younger yeah. years, it's, it's probably yeah. down the list of things to think about. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, your future self will, will thank you massively for <laughs> it. Um, I, I guess the only things to, to think about is the access to, to a pension as well. So at the moment, um, personal pension, you can access from 55. It's, it's going to move up to, to 57 um, in, in 2028. Obviously, that's a little bit earlier than when you'd be able to access your state pension. So you just need to think about when you're going to get money potentially and factor in when you want to retire. I always love it when I sit down with clients and ask them when they want to retire and what they think retirement looks like. And some people just look at you blank, blank face. Like I have a choice. I like, even <laughs> thought about it. Yeah. You know, not even thought about it, but um, yeah, I think I think they're great because of the tax relief on the way in, and then how you access them now as well. So, um, legislation that came in a few years ago means that there's a lot more flexibility in how you access your your personal pension pots. Um, you know, ranging from taking that twenty five percent lump sum tax free if you wanted to do that, um, or just be tax efficient in how you regularly draw down that pension. Um, so yeah, I think I think pensions are great and often. Personal pensions can be separate from from your estate when it comes to um, inheritance tax, so they can be quite an efficient mm -hmm. thing to hold on to. So I guess if it's the last thing that you've got, yeah. um, and and then it, it passes on, then it can pass on quite efficiently in that regard. Brilliant, Andy. We cover all the ground, but that was yeah. good. 
everyone's future selves will thank you for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We, could, we could come back in 20 years and, and see, if, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see if that's actually happened. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Andy. If anyone wants to find out a bit more uh, about how you can help them in more personal circumstances, how can they get in touch with you? So, Megan, if, if, if people want to um, know a little bit more and, and allow us to, to speak to them and understand their personal circumstances a little bit more, I think we can we can put the website link mm-hmm. for John Scott Davidson um, at, the, at the end of the, the podcast. Yeah, it'll be in the notes below, whatever you're pe- people listening, can, people watching. Can, people can click through that and, uh, yeah, get in touch with us and we can, we can go from there. Perfect. Brilliant. That's great. Well, Andy, that was really good. Thank you for your time. Brilliant. Today. I really appreciate it. Brilliant. So that was our episode with Andy. Um, a bit of a bumper episode uh, yeah. today. Covered but a lot. I say it all the time, but we did cover a lot of ground. Yeah, we really did. But uh, other than that, you will see us same place, same time next week. Different jumper. See you then. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.